Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the version 111 update that is being published on Wednesday, November the 7th, 2024, sometime late in the evening. So as we always do with an update, if you go to guide.trackerproducts.com, right here at the very top left hand corner, we have a list of uh, the newest updates that have come out and I'm going to focus today on version 111. Um, we're, we're just going to go over the features and the minor features that are in here. This should be pretty quick. This update is not going to be as big as the version 110 update that came out. Um, there's nothing in here uh, unless you determine you want to turn it on that's going to be available to every user in your organization right off the bat. So uh, not a big impact on the UI. So the first thing I want to come uh, go over is the new uh, container uh, case level auto numbering. All right, so I'm gonna go in and uh, the first thing we wanna do is we have to turn this on. So this is a feature you do have to enable. So, and, and this really only applies if you're using containers. If you're not using containers in your organization, you can skip this part. So I'm gonna go in and turn containers on in this organization. And the update is this one right here. Um, prior to this update, if you wanted auto numbering enabled, you would turn that on and, and every container created would automatically be assigned an ascending item number. Well, now we've got this cool new thing where it can use the case, uh, the case number as the ID for the container. And I think most people are gonna, anybody that is using container auto numbering is almost assuredly gonna wanna use this new feature. So I'm gonna turn that on and let me show you what this looks like. We're gonna go back now to a, a, a recent case that I've got in the system. System, and it doesn't matter. In fact, you can see I've got no items in this case and we want to add a, a new item. And so we're going to go in and we're going to say that this item is alcohol. It doesn't matter what the item is. And I'm going to skip all this other entry and we're going to go straight down to here where I say, yes, I do want to put this item into a container. And so here's the kicker now. So this case number that I'm working with is 8736-456593 you know, and the container number is going to be 87 Seven three six dash four five that case number hyphen one. And so that's the real beauty of this update now is your container names will be something very specific, not just some random ascending number, but an actual case number followed by a hyphen. So as we go along, um, in, in fact, with the, with the cool new update that we rolled out in version 110, uh, the user can now say, yes, I do want uh, these items to go into this container. And oh, by the way, on a side note, um, this is not enabled. That we still have the the option in place for those of you that in version one ten that said I do not want uh, my item entry to include this. Uh, this will not be included on item entry. This will still be part of your normal process of how you add items into a container. I just happen to be showing it off as the uh, the data entry component here. So it's going to be this case number hyphen one. And when I create a a new container, it'll be hyphen two. So the system is auto automatically going to track what the container numbering is and relate it to a case number. Now one thing you do need to keep in mind is you will not be able to um, have uh, multiple items that are a part of multiple different cases going into the same container using this format because you would have an item part of multiple different containers and it will warn you if you try to do that, which is fine. You could be on an item search. You could have two items that are part of two different cases and you could say, hey, I want to stick them in a container. Uh, it will warn you that it can't auto number the container and it will force you to come up with a container number or a name or however you want that convention to be. So this is going to be a really cool new update for anybody that is using uh, containers. Okay, the next feature that I want to cover in the version 11.1 update is this uh, ability for an org admin to create a shared menu view. And before I dig into that, I want to go back to the main page of the support guide and I'm going to do a search for uh, menu customization. And so uh, you'll notice down here under general user information, adding cases, persons, and items, there's an option for menu customization. And so if you're unfamiliar with how to customize or create different views um, in a menu, in a menu. And here's what I mean by that. Let me go back into the, soft, all of the software. I'm looking at a particular case and I'm looking at a list of items. There's only one item in this case, but the menu customization is this entire box right in here. So what I'm about to cover deals with this, but what I'm not going to do is go through how to create a different custom view. Now, you need to be aware, if you have no idea what this is, let me show off one thing. 
by default, you're always looking at a default view. And so you can see right now, my current view on this list of items is default, but I've built underneath here a currency view. And so the currency view, uh, it has uh, fields related to the fact that it's currency. And so the reason you have menu customization in these different views is so that you don't have one view that has a hundred fields in it, you know, that stretches forever wide. Some people will have a currency view, a firearm view, maybe a hard drive view, depending on how you're using the software. You could have many different views. Well, the purpose of this, and, and, and oh, by the way, that is all covered back here in this how to customize that menu. So if you have no idea how to customize menus, go back and view this document first, then come back and let me show you what this new thing does uh, that's in this update. So I'm in this currency view right now, and let's just say that I as an org admin really like this view and I want everybody else to have this view. You now have the option under menu customization, and when I click on duplicate the selected, there is now an option to share this custom view with every user in my organization. So I'm going to call this default currency uh, menu view. All right. And so the minute I click OK, and you need to be very careful uh, about what I'm about to say. Um, when I click OK, it is going to take this view and it's going to copy it to every user in my organization. And the minute you do that, your view will be your own view, and their view that you just copied to them will be a copy of yours, but it will be at that point in time. So if you make further modifications to your view, um, you will need to share that back out with everybody. But keep in mind, every time you share the view out, it's going to copy that view into their view, so their menu will have as many views as you've copied into theirs. So I would take time, get these right, um, and then you will have the option to share that out with all of your users. And I've already suggested development some better um, updates to this. Like um, we may want to have it to where you can pick which permission groups or types of people or even individual users that you want to share this out with. So if your mind is like mine at all, it's probably racing with all the things that could be done. Um, we wanted to get this out because we had some clients that needed to share some views with everybody. Um, but we'll down the road, we will update this to make it a little Little more granular than what it is right now but at least for today you got the option to share these views out with everybody so the last three things I want to cover are all going to be pretty quick because they're pretty minor. Uh, the first one here is the being able to filter your storage locations by the status of it. This is a pretty minor update, but a lot of people have been asking for this one. So when I go into tools and go into storage locations, at the top you now have an option to say, hey, I want to display all storage locations or just my active ones or just my inactive ones. Um, and so it, it just makes it a little easier to deal with some of the sorting. 